That's no, the message of not it's being it's educated, being, being dumb, and what's wrong with America. <laughs> Who this said that? Sonny just did. What is wrong with Joy, America? Go back as far as you want. I believe, um, I blame a messaging within the Democratic Party. You don't blame well, the Republican Party Can I just Party finish my point, please? When they were saying we don't feel safe and the left focused on defund the police and bail reform. Yeah. When they said they we're also, worrying about. Also can I just finish? Real, let me just let me just finish real quickly. OK, so I wasn't even expecting to do another video on The View. But at this point, things have exploded and they're turning on each other because at this point, you have some who see the truth. They're now seeing the light on what went wrong and they're willing to be open minded to maybe we need to rethink this. And the other ones just won't let go. I'll let you decide on who those individuals are as we watch this video. I disagree. All right. Um, I think that the. <coughs> that I, I'd like to reframe the conversation. I think Bernie Sanders is wrong. I think the more relevant question actually is what is wrong with America? I think um, what is wrong with our country that the Republican Party would choose as a candidate and support a candidate who is an insurrectionist, who is an election denier, who is someone who is twice impeached, 34-time convicted felon, um, someone who has been accused, of alleged sexual misconduct by 26 women uh, found liable for sexual abuse. Uh, what is wrong with this country that they would choose a message of divisiveness, of xenophobia, of racism, of misogyny over a message of inclusiveness, a message for the people, by but the people, of the people. That is what the problem is. It's the Republican Party. Can I, can I, what's wrong I with say America? something before? We can yeah. do a second. Yeah, so as you can see, Alyssa is just done with Sonny. You could just tell. Because it's one thing for us to unite because we all hate Trump, which is what truly brings them together. But now what you're seeing is because he won the election, yes, we all still hate Trump. But can we just be honest about why he won the election? And Alyssa is going to the numbers and the facts, which is what? Uh, he won the popular vote. So it's not a sexism thing. It's not people being misogynistic. Women voted for Trump, so you can't use that excuse. And by the way, Latinos and women voted for Hillary Clinton, but okay. Um, but Sonny Holston, you could see how hateful she is, right? And how angry she is at this result. And that's where you see the true character of an individual in the face of defeat. How do they respond? Exactly. And the Republicans don't know I think that the, the message of the Democrats sounded elitist. You don't va have value in the society. They you don't sounded have a college that way, degree. but when you look at the but proof, yeah, but, 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 but Joy, no it's condescending. It's, it's condescending. The there is a, there is a condescending. Th the way that the left speaks to its voters, it, it really is. A message of joy and inclusiveness? That's no, the message of not, not being educated, being America. dumb, and what's wrong with America. <laughs> Who said that? Sonny just did. What is wrong with America? My point here is that that's not what Kamala Harris No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. My point is, I don't blame Joe Biden. I don't blame Kamala Harris. Go back as far as you want. I believe um, I blame a messaging within the Democratic Party. You don't blame well, the Republican Party Can I just Party finish my point, please? All right. So everything she just said is facts, right? I showed you guys the clip on CNN, which is a video I just put up where there was a Democrat strategist that went on there and gave a brutal take. And if you haven't seen it, I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video. But it's all comes down to messaging. Right. What did I tell you guys? Historically, the Democrats have been successful at selling bullshit and the Republicans have been failures at selling something that will actually help the American people. Right. So it's always been that way. And then all of a sudden during this election cycle, it kind of flip flopped where Trump and his messaging actually connected with voters, even though there's a lot of people who don't like them. And the Democrats lost their way with their messaging. They were closing with Trump as Hitler and all this other stuff. But no one cares about that. I obviously have a problem. Anyone has a problem with Donald Trump. The bigger question should be, yes, Sonny, why did they vote for him? Yes. In sweeping. So they need to be introspective. No, no, no. We need to be introspective. If we voted for they Kamala Harris, we need to say, offering. what didn't resonate with the voters? Do you know what didn't resonate with the voters? When they were saying we don't feel safe and the left focused on defund the police and bail reform. Yeah. When they said they we're also, worrying about. Also can I just finish? Real, let me just let me just finish real quickly. When they were focused on renaming. It's only an hour show, ladies. <laughs> Joy. When they were focused on renaming. <laughs> 
naming schools. There were people saying, hey, students are destroying colleges. I paid for that. I sent them there. They can't learn. And everyone apologized for it and didn't want to attend to it. They also denied the border was a crisis and kept saying, no, 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 it's fine. This is not a... The, there was a border the, bill, though. There was the a border bill. Yes, but Joy, my point is the they screamed and screamed and screamed. They didn't vote for him because he's a racist or a misogynist. They voted because they needed help in their everyday yeah, lives. But Sarah, they, they made they the majority of this country that. because there's a every of, stat coming out on the people yeah. willing to self-reflect are showing these Oh, wait, they're going to say, I'm a racist and a misogynist and the exit choice. You really think 74 million people are racist? Every racist and misogynist voted for Donald Trump. Not everyone that voted for Donald Trump was a racist and misogynist. I agree with that. Everyone swept. They swept every category. And the reason they did is to say, hey, guys, no excuses this time. Yeah. OK, just in case you don't notice this by now, it's Sarah Haynes and Alyssa Griffin. Those are the only two on the show that are actually seeing the light on what happened. The other ones, they are just lost. Joy, Sonny and Anna Navarro. Now, speaking of Anna, here's her delusional take. I certainly am having a really hard time getting my arms around it because it's hard to understand how they voted for somebody who today they know who he is, right? In 2016, yeah. perhaps they didn't and perhaps they thought he was going to change. Mm -hmm. Black people voted for somebody they know is a racist. Latinos voted for somebody they know is going to deport their abuela. Yeah. Puerto Ricans voted for somebody they know treats them like trash and has people around them who actually calls them trash. White women voted for somebody they know took away their reproductive yes. rights. So all of those things are hard for people like me to understand. And, and, that's, me. and it's, going to take a, it's going to take a while. I would say I'm not going to lecture Democrats because I only voted for three Democrats in my life, 2016, 2020, and now 2024. So I'm not going to lecture them on what their messaging should be as a lifelong Republican. What I am going to do, though, is tell the Democrats that are thinking of where we where they go in four years to start making their relationships now all right so if you guys are getting value from this video so far please like share and subscribe to our channel if you want to support us further you can go to the link in the description below and uh, grab yourself something from our merch store or buy us a cup of coffee now this has like i told you guys it's it's exploded we know who is where on this issue um they're probably divided I don't know if this will tear the show apart. Uh, that remains to be seen. But I'd like to think that Alyssa and, and Sarah at this point are kind of like, man, I, I, I know we get into arguments, but come on, people think. Right. Because they want to win. They want the Democratic Party to be successful. And if you have people in the party who are not willing to accept the truth or, and not even just accept it, joy. Anna and Sonny, they won't even acknowledge it. They automatically dismiss it, right? They don't even want to hear the idea that the voters have spoken and this is really what matters to voters. They don't want to hear that. All right, so this takes us to uh, a clip from Jen Psaki, who I guess she has seen the light too as well. And um, she clearly articulates exactly what I've been saying, what you probably believe as it pertains to the Democratic Party. And she's admitting that they did get it wrong. Watch this. The other thing I think that Democrats and people who are who voted for Harris and are scared about Trump should just be sober about and curious about is not just why did people move toward Trump, but why did Democrats and people who had been with the party for some time not come out and turn out for Kamala Harris and not turn out for the Democrats? There mm -hmm. were many headwinds mm -hmm. here. There is sexism. There, there's racism. All of that is true. But I also think there is a real question I hope people start looking at about who people are listening to. In yeah. my view, there was an over listening to and an over lifting up of people who left Trump, not people who left the Democratic Party. The people uh -huh. who left the Democratic Party are the people who are going to you know, win in the future. The people who left Trump, the never Trumpers who have important mm -hmm. voices and have that is not the winning coalition. And I think that is a takeaway. Yeah, see, she touched on what I've been saying from the very beginning is their obsession with Trump is like a drug and they've overdosed on it. Right. They spent too much time focusing on Trump, too much time making their careers about Trump, making their TV shows about Trump, making books they release about Trump. And they forgot about the most important person in this entire equation, the voter. And that's why they find themselves where they're at, where Trump, he did focus on the uh, persecutions, of course, but he always made room for the voters. He always talked about the voters. He always said, this is our movement.
that they're not really coming after him. They're coming after me and you, and he's just in the way. I mean, that's always been a cornerstone of his message. That's not the Democrats' message. Their message has been, Trump is bad, so you should vote for us. And it just did not resonate in this election, as you guys know. So obviously, there is a question here, and that is, what do the Democrats do moving forward, particularly uh, Joe Biden and the current administration, which includes Kamala Harris? Uh, what do they do? Because there's only 10 weeks left. Well, Bakari Sellers, who is a race hustler, and he is unhinged, and he's not taking this loss well either, uh, and he has yet to provide any common sense take on this issue, um, he has now reached the level of pettiness on what they should do. So I hope that Joe Biden makes the next 10 weeks as consequential as he can. Um, I don't care about drawing outside the lines or what Republicans may think about it. This is within your purview. You can actually do it and you should do it. And you know, one more thing, John, is you have a hell of a vice president right there who has a legal pedigree uh, to sit on the Supreme Court and let Republicans mm -hmm. go crazy in eight. I'm even mentioning that option. Mm -hmm. You're That's floating. Are you floating? <laughs> this is, you know, 7.39 a.m. on the East Coast. Did Bakari Sellers just float Vice President Kamala Harris as a potential Supreme Court nominee? Not only am I floating it, but I want to stir up everything. I want people's heads to explode this morning so we go into the weekend just knowing that the chaos has not ended just yet. Yeah, so as you could see, what we're going to have moving forward on our hands is you're going to have Democrats or liberals uh, who are going to accept the defeat. They're going to say, we need a new change. We need to reflect and we need to do the right thing and take responsibility. You saw that on The View with Sarah and Alyssa. And then secondly, you're going to have Democrats and liberals who are going to say, screw that. It's not our fault. Um, we don't know what the heck is wrong with the voters. In fact, we need to triple down on our message that Trump is bad. And really all it is is them uh, digging their own grave at a certain point. Because if you go down this road of this level of pettiness, you're only going to lose whatever credibility you do have today, it's going to be gone. Now, given that there's been a lot of opinions flying around about what took place and what's wrong and who to blame and all this other stuff, can we just once again remind ourselves of the numbers and the facts and how historic this victory was for Donald Trump? Uh, here's Harry Enten on CNN, their data analyst, who brought up some interesting points about this election win and just maybe the view. I'm talking about Joy, Anna, and Sonny. Maybe they should be listening to this as well. Watch this. Again, holy Toledo. It's just like, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, these are the types of groups that you would never have thought that Donald Trump would have gained so much support among eight years ago when he first won against Hillary Clinton. Trump's was the best GOP uh, showing among 18 to 29 year olds in 20 years. You have to go all the way back to 2004. How about among black voters? It was the best performance for a Republican candidate for president in 48 years since Gerald Ford back in 1976. And among Hispanic voters, the exit polls only go back since 1972. But, but Donald Trump's performance on Tuesday was the best for a Republican can presidential candidate in exit poll history. He literally goes all the way back through history and breaks history. This is what we're talking about, Kate Baldwin. Groups that you never thought that Donald Trump would do well among, even for a Republican candidate, that is what he did. If the 2016 election was about Donald Trump breaking through white working class voters, this election was about breaking through and going to that Democratic coalition and tearing it apart. And that is at the heart of this issue from this election is that those voters that were key for them to win this election, they're gone. And so the real question is, what do they do as a response? What is their plan moving forward? Well, so far, what we've seen is they're tearing each other apart. Some are going to try to figure it out, but it looks like most are still grieving over this loss. And I guess it doesn't help when you see a post like this from Bernie Sanders, who really tears into the Democratic Party. So after Election Day, this is what he put up. Bernie Sanders, right? He said, it should come as no great surprise that a Democratic Party, which has abandoned working class people, would find that the working class has abandoned them. While the Democratic leadership defends the status quo, the American people are angry and want change, and they are right. And then he uh, wrote a big, uh, uh, I guess, statement about it. That's why on The View, when you saw what Sonny Holston had to say, she was responding to this posts from Bernie Sanders. So we will be here every step of the way to continue to watch the meltdown from these individuals on the left that went out of their way to make people like you and me feel that we are insane 
for voting for Trump that we are the racist, fascist, uh, sexist, or uh, we support misogyny and, and all the other labels that are derogatory that they want to place upon us for supporting Trump. So yes, every step of the way, I will continue to report on their meltdown. That's one. Number two, we also need to continue to show you guys the contrast between what they want you to believe and what the truth really is. And then number three, uh, isn't it good to see that there are people who are willing to face the music, uh, that are willing to look at the truth and call out their own party? Uh, now, we'll see what happens as a result. We'll see if this show, uh, you know, these ladies part ways. I don't think it's going to be that serious. I know that I know they've had arguments in the past. But as I said in the beginning, I didn't expect to do another video on them. But now that you see them tearing into each other, um, it really makes you wonder what will happen with that show. So having said that, that is my opinion. What do you guys think about uh, them turning on each other, them clearly unable to handle this defeat? And when I say them, I'm talking about Joy, Sonny and Anna Navarro. Uh, what do you guys think about their responses and the excuses they continue to cling on to, even though we know uh, it's not really reality? Uh, now, I did mention during the video about CNN and how a Democratic strategist went on there and gave a brutal take exactly what every Democrat needs to hear. Anybody that voted for Kamala Harris should listen to this, including the women on The View. And if you haven't seen it for yourself, all you got to do is click on that video because it's coming up right now.